Praise God. Praise God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Uh, the Bible says, let us rejoice and be glad in it. One songwriter says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So um, this is definitely a day that we've never seen before, a day that we will never see again. And it is truly an a honor and a blessing to be in the land of the living. Uh, God didn't have to wake us up this morning. Uh, there's a lot of calamity going on in the land. Um, Israel is fighting. You know, uh, that there's a lot going on. And and I know with all these wars and with all this fighting, with all this commotion and with the enemy attacking, we definitely have, have God's attention. Um, I was listening to Pastor Bernie Miller this morning, and he was explaining what was going on between Israel and, and Palestine. And uh, he was explaining, because a lot of people have really been speaking uh, against Israel. And... <laughs> If you know the Bible, then you know that Israel is God's chosen people. And at some point, God is going to cease the war, and Israel is going to win. The land was given to them according to the scriptures. Um, and when God gave them the land, of course, when God says put people out the land, you're supposed to do exactly what God says do it. When you don't do it, it always comes back to, to, to hunt you. So. Uh, once again, we know that God is in control. We will continue to pray for Israel uh, as well as pray for us. You know, we, we got war and famine right here in the land. You know, so we just need to continue to keep trusting God, even in moments where we can't trace him. The scripture says to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Uh, so. Once again, we will continue to lift up uh, all of those who are going through. It's a lot of people that's in warfare right now. Uh, and as the pastor was saying this morning, uh, Christ is coming back for his church. You know, that's something that we stand on. It's definitely something that we believe. Uh, we just need to keep on looking because he's definitely coming back. He's not going to leave us in this turmoil always, you know. So uh, once again, we're going to uh, get ready to look to the Lord in prayer and ask God to bless our meeting today. Uh, I think we have a, a word that's going to uh, reach us where we are. Um, God is a very present help in time of trouble, and God is faithful. Anybody know that? Amen. 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 God is faithful even when we are not. As a matter of fact, the Bible says he remains faithful. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad God was faithful when I wasn't. I'm glad that God continued to be God and that he remained on the throne even when we were out of pocket. That's one thing that I love about God. And I think earlier uh, in the beginning when I first got saved, that's what drew me. Just knowing that all the junk that I had done and God still loved me and had the capacity and the room to draw me in. Not only to draw me in, but to keep me. There have been times when we all have gotten out of line, not a pocket, but God's love continues. It's everlasting, you know, so um, I'm happy about that. But we're going to pray and we're going to uh, get to God's word. Let's pray. Father, we come to you this morning thanking you for just being God. Thank you, Lord. Uh, we say collectively and individually that nobody can do us like you can. Thank you for being the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. Therefore, we don't have to really worry too much about the things that's going on in the middle because we know that our God has everything under control. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we want to thank you for just allowing us to be in your presence. The Bible teaches us that in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. So we thank you that we're not just happy, but we have joy. Joy is something that you give us. The world didn't give it to us, and the world can't take it away. We thank you for all of our trials, our tribulations. We thank you for everything that got us to this point. And, Lord, we know that we had some rocky roads. We had some challenges, Lord, along the way. But we thank you that those challenges came to help us grow, to help us to have a different perspective on life. We thank you, Lord, for being everything that we need and providing everything that we need according to your riches and glory. We love you because you first loved us. And we thank you today for looking beyond our faults and seeing everything that we need. We pray, God, for those who are sick and homebound, those who are incarcerated. We pray for those who are just struggling. Somebody woke up just in a fight, in a struggle. 
Let them know, God, that they can look to the hills from which comes their help, knowing that their help comes from the Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you promised to do. We ask that you would lead us, God, in green pastures, that you will continue to help us to be conformed to the image of your son, be more Christ-like. Help us to feed our enemies, give them water when they're thirsty. Help us to conform our will to the will of God. And even when we don't understand you, God, help us to keep moving forward and divorcing our eyes and walking by faith and not by sight. Thank you for providing everything that we need. You have once again been faithful, even when we have been unfaithful. We bless your name today. We lift you up because we know that if you be lifted from this earth, that you will draw all men unto yourself. Have your way today, God. And we will be careful to give you all the honor, the praise, and the glory, for we ask this in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Um, today, I want to uh, take a little moment uh, to talk about uh, when life happens. When life happens. Um, I actually had something else in mind to teach this morning, but when I, when I woke up, God, he gave me something totally different. And that happens from time to time. You never know. Uh, what God is going to have to say through you. Uh, you just have to be a willing vessel and to be obedient to the move of God as he moves you. Um, sometimes, God showed me this, that sometimes life just happens. And unfortunately, when life unfolds, a lot of us don't know how to handle it. Um, sometimes, you know, uh, when you were in school, your teacher would give you what is called a pop quiz. A pop quiz is, you never know when it's gonna happen, that's why it's called a pop quiz. But the quiz usually covers material that you've been exposed to before. Teachers try to get you to always be ready for a quiz. And God showed me that in life, you're gonna have pop quizzes. You're gonna have quizzes, that they're gonna be things that, that's going to happen where you know that God have, has been in this position before, you've been exposed to it, you've seen somebody else go through it, uh, you've been exposed to a lot of traumatic experiences, but it never hit you. And when it hits you, it's a different ball game. Usually we're, we're, we have been so prepared to help other people come through whatever they're going through. I mean, we can walk with them through, we can grab their hand, we'll pray with them. But when that same calamity hits us, we act like we've never seen it before. Seems like we've never been exposed to it before. And God says, this is your pop quiz. I was preparing you by allowing you to help somebody else through it. And you just have to be ready when, when life happens. And God gave me about five things that we need to practice when life happens. There are, there are actual steps that you can take there are actual things that you can do to help you navigate tough seasons i don't know about you but i've, I've been in plenty of tough seasons what about you I've, I've had some tough seasons I've, I've had some seasons where i literally wanted to throw the towel in i wanted god to take the mantle off of my life and place the mantle that was tailor-made for me give it to somebody else and sometimes it's like that because it seems like it's too much for you Lord, you didn't tell me that I was going to have to go through all this. You didn't tell me I was going to have to deal with these type of folk. You didn't tell me that I was preparing for this right here, but God will never put more on you than you can handle. If God allows you to go through it, it's because he has equipped you to actually go through those tough seasons. And so the first thing that you want to do when life just happens, because it's going to happen, there's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. It's going to happen. I don't care how much you know God. doesn't matter how long you've been in church. doesn't matter how many scriptures you can quote. I need you to hear me. Life is going to happen. And the first thing that you need to do when life happens, I didn't say if, I said when life happens, you need to pray no matter what. You need to learn how to pray. I'm going to tell you what will teach you how to pray. Your circumstance. I learned how to pray 
not just by reading the Bible. I learned how to pray for real when I realized that I didn't have nowhere else to turn to. Have you ever had circumstances to happen and you thought about calling somebody, but what you were going through was way too much for them? You know, we all got those people that we reach out to, prayer partners, prayer warriors, intercessors. But sometimes, your intercessor ain't enough. Sometimes what you're dealing with is even beyond you. And God says, no, you're not going to pass the book to somebody else on this one. This is something that you're going to have to face. This is something that you're going to have to uh, pray about yourself. Because some stuff you can't tell for. Anybody been there? Now, I trust you, but not completely. Because um, I don't know about you, but sometimes when you're vulnerable, you're more open. But people change. And will use your vulnerability against you. So we're very reluctant to tell everybody everything, right? You have to move with wisdom and you have to move with caution. Because, like I said before, people change. They shift like the wind. And they might just be having a bad day. Or maybe you didn't answer their call. It could be something simple and something petty. Because you know people petty, right? right. Somebody say amen. amen. People can get real petty. Amen. And then they want to air you out. Because they're in. They're offended. And they air you out concerning the things that you've been vulnerable with them about. And then you hard on yourself because you wish you hadn't said anything. This is what I've learned throughout this walk. I'm going to talk to God before I talk to anybody. I'm going to have a little talk with Jesus. Have you ever heard that? Have a little talk with Jesus. Sometimes... You have to have that one-on-one with him. I'm not going to trust somebody else before I trust the author and perfecter of my faith. Mm -hmm. I got to give him the first go at it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And I told you before, there are three answers to prayer. Come on, help me out. Mm -hmm. Yes, Yes. no, and wait. And wait. wait. (laughs) There's no in-between. There's no, let me, no, it's yes. No, and the way our problem, once again, is that we get confused about which one is which. When God says wait, we take it as a no. But God is trying to work on your patience. God is trying to, God is trying to put you on his time because he's not bound by time we are. So when I pray, I want God to move when I want him to move. And God says, yeah, you were able to dictate to your coworkers what to do. Some of your family members, your kids, he says, but I'm not them. I'm God all by myself. And I move when I get ready and by the counsel of my own will. And so you have to learn when talking about when life happens. Sometimes you wake up and life just happens. Mm -hmm. You got up, you prayed. You you, you, you already got it clean. I'm going to have a good day today. I'm, you happy, you drunk your coffee, you ain't snapping on nobody. I'm talking about it's a good day. And all of a sudden, Satan steps into the midst of your day and says, no, nah, they woke up too happy today. Mm. He, he, he knows that, knows that. But what does the Bible mean? Steal and destroy. You know, so so your challenge is going to be to keep that energy that you woke up with when the devil started messing with you. Mm-hmm. When he started getting it all in your head, got you thinking irrational thoughts, got you thinking that nobody even really cares about you. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, you know, that's the enemy in your head when you start saying that you everybody has one or two people that love them. Amen. 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 Even though you might feel like nobody cares. The enemy got you feeling sorry for yourself. 
He got you having a pity party. You woke up this way, but now life happened. See, the challenge is to trust God even when life happens. Because if God brought you to it, come on, y'all know. We quote it. We know what to say. I mean, we got the jargon. We got it down pat. But when it comes to walking it out, Lord, this is why I struggle. I can quote the scripture, but Lord, I need help walking it out. I need help not just saying the Lord is my shepherd. I need help believing that you're my shepherd. I know that, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I should fear no evil. But I, I want to I wanna be able to face evil and know that evil is not going to overtake me. Because even right now, my God is with me in my valley experience. You will find out very quickly who's really concerned about your life. As I told you last week, sometimes you can look at people and you can ask them, how you doing? They're going to tell you they're doing fine. But when you know, you know. Right? There are things that you should be able to discern about somebody that you love to show you they're not telling you the truth. And if the Spirit shows you that they're in a struggle, you don't just take them at their word. You move how the Spirit moves you. Hell on somebody. Don't, don't try to downplay. You say you, you, you live by the Spirit and you try the Spirit by the Spirit. So when the Spirit is speaking to you, it's, it's, it's very important that you pay close attention to that still, small voice. You can save somebody from jumping. You can save somebody from destroying their life if you are obedient to God when he's speaking to you. I tell a lot of people, you don't always have to run to the pastor every time you need an answer from God. Sometimes your pastor waiting on answers. <laughs> Hello, somebody. You know, you're in a relationship with God. And when you're in a relationship with God, guess what? He speaks to you. If something happens and you go to the hospital, oh, pastor, I need my pastor here. It's good to have a pastor that'll show up. Amen. Amen. But just in case your pastor got his own stuff going on, got things going on in their own family. Don't get mad at your pastor and go church hopping just because your pastor couldn't show up when you wanted him to show up. Guess what? God was there the whole time. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You think God doesn't have a problem with you acknowledging and asking for your pastor yeah. and you ain't said nothing to him and right. he's right there in the room? Come right. on, somebody. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. If nobody else shows up, God gonna show up. Come on. Give the Lord a hand up praise. Come on. Because he's a faithful He's always there. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. At the same time. This is what I love about God. Sometimes God is there when I really don't want him to be. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> I know I'm not the only one. Lord, turn your head. Get out the room. Close your ears. I don't want you to see me like this. Because we're looking at God the way we look at people. People can only handle us when we dress up our mess. They, they like us like that. They're going to talk about us though. They're going to talk about you whether you dress it up or whether you expose it. Yeah. But God says, even before you dress up your mess, I already knew you was a hot mess. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I gave my son as a ransom for you. That's why he went up that hill called Golgotha and gave his life as a ransom for many. Because when I saw you, I knew you were a mess. I knew you were going to get in a mess, and I knew you were going to be a mess. Come on, somebody. Come on. And he came to save us from Satan, sin, and self. Uh -huh. Satan, sin, and and self. Thank you, Lord. So we must learn how to pray 
no matter what. People find it very difficult to pray when they're in an unfavorable and uncomfortable position. Like, Lord, I can't pray until I get out this mess. And he's telling us, no, I don't want you to wait until you get out the mess to pray. That's what religious people might tell you. But this is not about religion. This is about relationship. And when you're in a relationship with people, you can be transparent with them about where you are. If you got to hide the fact that you're in a struggle with somebody who professes to love you, then maybe the love ain't loving. Mm. Maybe something, something ain't right because I'm not going to tell you everything that you want to hear about me. Sometimes I've got to come clean with things uh, that you might not agree with or things that you might not like. But if you love me, that's what you want, right? Yeah. 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 Because at the end of the day, who doesn't want to be free? And nobody holds us hostage like we hold ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, true, yeah. God, you got to bite your tongue. You can't speak your peace. You can't be who you are. You're always trying to cover up and hide this and hide that. No, I want to be around people who can handle all of me. Yeah. Yeah. But you, you got you to pray. Mark eleven twenty four. Let me tell you what Mark eleven twenty four says. He says, therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, here, here's the key, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Let me read it again. He says, therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, Okay? So he's saying that it's okay to ask him for things in prayer. Okay? But asking is not the only component to getting it. Sometimes we say, I'm going to ask God for this. No, there's another component that, that you're missing. The other component is belief. You have to if, you ask, if, if you're bold enough to ask God for it, you need to be bold enough to believe that he'll do it. Right. If you have the audacity to go to God in prayer and ask him for anything, God says the only thing that's going to activate it is your belief. And so if you're asking God for something that you don't even believe him for, that's the hold up. Lord, well, when is it going to happen? When you do what I ask you to do. He said, a lot of times we ask God for it, but truly in our hearts, we, we don't really believe he's going to do it. We just test it, see if he'll do it. You know how you see somebody, then let me get $100. I'm just kidding. I'll let you go do it. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm just testing the water because sometimes you may run up on somebody asking for $100, but you need 100 yeah, I get to you. You're testing the water. God says, no, that's not going to work with me. When, when you come to me, one of the prerequisites for getting what you ask for is believing that I'm going to do it. Hello, somebody. Don't you know how many people are walking around in this earth who don't have it simply because they don't believe it? They ask for it. I don't believe God's going to do it. And he says, believe that you have what? Received it. That means you need to live like he's already done it. Because received has ED on it, meaning past tense. So let me read it again. <laughs> it says, therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, y'all see it, believe that you have received it. And it will be yours. That means you're already thanking him for it. for it. 
and you ain't even got it yet. You know that's bold. That's, that's the type of faith that God is looking for. Somebody who can praise me before I even do the thing. Somebody that can lift up holy hands and, and, and worship me before I even make a move. God says, I need folk to follow me who have full confidence that I can do it and that I will do it. And so you got to learn how to thank, thank God in advance. And then Romans 8.26 says this concerning prayer. He says, likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. Anybody in here got any weaknesses? Just, just throw your hand up. Just, uh, if you don't have any weaknesses, just keep your hand down. <laughs> We're going to move you to a different section of the church. <laughs> Everybody in here has a weakness. For some of you, it's chocolate. For some of you, it might be social media. Everybody's weakness is different. For some folks, it's an old fling. Amen. You okay, so you run into them in the store. And all of a sudden, those feelings come back. And what you got to do, pray real hard that Lord will help you forget them like you did all the other time. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But everybody has a weakness. But the Bible says in Romans 8, 26, that the Spirit helps us in our weakness. And in your Bible, that the word Spirit should have a capital S. Yeah. Does yours have a capital S? Yes. yes. There's a difference when you have the small S and the big S. Right? Uh -huh. When we're looking at the big S, we're talking about God. The little S, that's your spirit. Okay? So, if I could paraphrase this, I would say that God helps you in your weakness. Because he knows you're weak. Your weaknesses are not a surprise to the God who created you. They're just a surprise to people who put you on a pedestal. I don't understand how everybody can have weaknesses and go back and forth talking about other folks. Never understood that. You struggling with your whole life and want to put your mouth on a section of somebody's struggle. Your life falling apart in shambles and you make time, go out of your way to host. Y'all can hear me. Yes, I, I said host. Yeah. A round table. About somebody else's struggle. Their bills are paid. They're going to work on time. Their kids dressed up, going to school. And here it is. You got this whole struggle in your life. And this is what people do. They magnify somebody else's struggle. Because they wanted to minimize what they're going through. But the Bible says, those of us who follow God, that he's right there to help us in our weakness. And then it goes on to say, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought to pray. Y'all see that? Now we do pray. But sometimes we pray for what we want and not what we need. We pray, but we don't always know what to pray for. So, so you know what God does? Look at the rest of the verse. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. So when God is hearing our prayers, he said, man, they left a whole lot of stuff out. <laughs> They left a whole lot of stuff out right there. Ooh, Lord. They don't know what's around the corner. They don't know what they're really dealing with. They don't know how severe this is. And so we don't know what to pray. We think we can just lay, look, now that I lay me down to sleep, pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wait, I pray the Lord my soul to take. No. That ain't how you was praying when that situation hit you. That ain't, that ain't how you was praying when the doctor gave you that report. 
That's not how you pray when you got that bad phone call. Any how you pray. Even people who never prayed before, let the right thing happen. And they become experts in prayer. Oh, Lord, if you never heard me before, I need you to hear me right now. They start quoting scriptures and everything. They didn't even know that new scripture. The right thing will make you pray right. But I don't want, I don't want that to happen. Now, so Lord, I want to have a consistent prayer life with you. So when life does happen, we still on track. I don't want to call on you and you like, who is that? Looking all at the caller ID, who is this? This is an unfamiliar voice, unfamiliar number, unfamiliar person. The last time I heard from you was at that funeral that, that time. You don't want that type of relationship with God. The least you could do when you wake up, Lord, thank you for waking me up. Yeah. People wake up mean yeah. for no reason. Yeah. Frowning mad at the whole world. Yeah. What you mad for? Don't you know some people, alarm clocks went off and they didn't even move. Yeah. Here it is, you in your right mind moving around, got a roof over your head, yeah. clothes on your back, yeah. food on your table, a decent job, yeah. and you sucking lemons <laughs> that early in the morning. Yeah. We do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans too deep for words. And I want you to turn with me to Philippians 4, 5, and 7 real quick. Yeah, Ephesians. I mean, Philippians 4, 5, and 7. 5 through 7. I'm going to go ahead and read this. Philippians chapter 4, verses 5 through 7. I'm going to start with verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Then verse 5 says, let your gentle spirit, the small s, be known to all men. The Lord is near. Verse 6, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So, in essence, he's saying, what, what you worried about? What you worried for? Anxiety? You got anxiety? He says, that's because you worried about something. Be anxious for nothing. Nothing. Being anxious is not going to change your situation. What it will change is your health. It'll change the condition of your health. But he says, instead of worrying, he says, let's replace it with prayer and supplication. Not only that, he says, but while you're praying, I also need you to praise me. See, prayer and praise go together. Some people pray, but they forget to praise. Job is a prime example. <clears throat> the man lost everything. And in the midst of loss, the Bible says that he fell down and he began to worship God. How many people you know in real life that worship God when they lose something? When you run out of when you run out of supplies, when you run out of surplus, do you really worship God or do you start getting uncomfortable? Because the God I serve. He specializes in surplus. Meaning that you have, if you are a child of God, you always have access. It's crazy to have access to something 
and not tap into it. Because you don't know how, you don't know what to do. You know, in the midst of being in a house fire, I found myself um, complaining a little. Wasn't doing it intentionally because I'm not naturally a complainer. I don't really get off into complaining. Um, but I'm, this room too little. You know, saying stuff to myself like, man, I'm ready to get out this room. Like, whoo, man, this insurance company need to move faster. And then I caught myself and I kept catching myself. Because when you catch yourself, you can correct your wrong. I don't want God to have to correct me. I'd rather catch myself. Humble myself under the mighty hand of God that in due season he'll exalt me. All right? So I started thinking about the grand scheme of things, and I'm like, I got a clean place to lay my hand. Don't have all my stuff, but I got enough. On top of that, the, it ain't coming out of my pocket. Continental breakfast every morning. I ain't got to cook nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Room service. Whenever you need it. Whenever you want it. You ain't got to lift a finger and do nothing. And have the audacity to say this little room <laughs> and uh, the same one that, that will say something like, I'd rather live in a shack and have God <laughs> than in a mansion full of hell. <laughs> yeah. And God says, you got to walk that out. And plus, it's not like this is your final destination. Amen. You're complaining about passing through while I'm making something new for you. And I kicked myself in the butt. Because to me, that's stinking thinking. In moments like that, I should be praising God for what I have. He like, boy, I'm like, man, I only have two pair of shoes to wear. You tripping? All right. Because you got two pair of shoes? And some folk got holes in the bottom of their shoes and don't know where the next shoe is going to come from. And here it is, you got two pair of shoes that don't even look like you've been walking. And you still complain. Yeah. Because you can't get to your stuff. <laughs> because you want to wear certain stuff. And there's people out here that's waiting on hand-me-downs. Yeah. And so instead of complaining, I should have been praising Pray. When life happens, you got to learn how to pray. Secondly, y'all know this sermon. I already had something else prepared. I got up and I was like, the Lord's like, no, nah, this is it right here. Write it out. Secondly, know that wherever you are, it's a test. It's a test. God allows you to be tested. You don't even know where you stand if you ain't been tested. How do you know what your struggles are if you ain't been tested? Because I can walk around and brag about all the things I ain't done. Oh, Lord, deliver me from that. I don't do that no more. Oh, yeah, yeah. Man, you still struggle with that? I don't, I don't struggle with that anymore. But as soon as my test comes, 
it's going to show me what my struggle is. And sometimes your, your biggest struggle is you. Y'all said amen real low on that one. It ain't them. It's you. We feel better when we're able to point the finger at somebody else and say, you're the reason I'm doing this. Hmm. Now, nah, baby, you're the reason you're doing it at this point. Somebody can introduce you to something. Amen. <laughs> they can even take advantage of you. But guess what? At some point, you have to take responsibility for where you are and where you're going. Because if you don't take responsibility for where you are and where you're going, you're going to be accusing dead folk. Hmm. Sure yeah, because when, when they die, you're still going to be talking about what they did when they were alive. They're dead. Mm -hmm. And you say that you are a child of God. God is changing lives every single day. But he ain't changing yours. <laughs> Something ain't right about that. You got to know that where you are is a test. Listen to this. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says this. He says, God is faithful. That, that's enough in itself. God is faithful. And he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out. So that you may be able to endure it. So, listen. The Bible just takes away all of our excuses. All of them. Now, I can make excuses for whatever I want to make excuses for. But the Bible says that with every test is an exit door. Hello. Somebody say amen. 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 I didn't even know y'all hear me. When you are tempted and when you are tested, there's a, there's a big old sign over there that says exit. And there's a straight line to it. But you know what we do? We try to get out this way. Because I'm going to be honest. And I want y'all to be honest with me. Some of the stuff that you're tempted by are things that you like. What really makes you feel the way you feel about it because you know it doesn't please God. If God said, gave you the red, the, the green light on it, I you cool? God, you cool with it? I, I, okay. <laughs> Some stuff we run from, though we like it, because it does not bring glory to God. And so in moments like that, it becomes a fight. It becomes a fight because I want to please God. But I also want to please me. Y'all trying to act like y'all don't ever want to appease your flesh. <laughs> y'all sit up here acting sanctimonious. <laughs> and Paul, even Paul, the apostle Paul says, every single day is a struggle. Yeah. Yeah. He like, my, my spirit is warring against my flesh. Yeah. It's a fight every single day. When I would do good, evil is always present. It's like I'm in a war. And if you ain't in a war, you ain't saved. Come on. Yes, Pastor King, I'm, listen, dogmatically saved that if you're not in warfare, you're not saved. You're not saved because every believer is in warfare every day. Because guess what? My old nature wants to take over. You know, some people say, oh, I don't do that no more. That's very good. I'm glad God delivered you. But don't get it twisted. You might not do it now, but the potential is still there. All right? So as you move through life, you need to move through with humility at the forefront. Because the moment you start bragging, the moment you start, yeah, talking about what you don't do anymore, Say, say, oh, okay. <laughs> because everybody got that one thing. Yeah. That one thing that weakens you. It's like, ah, Lord, why? <laughs> you 
you've been praying. I, I, I know I'm off. I'm off. Lord, you got to pray extra hard. Do you remember when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he was praying? Did he start sweating? That, that's the type of prayer that we got to pray about some stuff. But know this. If it's a test, there's also a way out of the test. God is going to get you out of it, but you got, you got to stay true to him. One of the reasons we fail test so much is because we try to do it on our own. In those moments, you need to turn to God. Lord, I need your help. You need to be honest. Lord, I can't, I can't do this on my own. Peter was drowning. He said, Lord, save me. Those are some simple words, but those words are powerful. If you know you're drowning, why should somebody else have to tell you to ask for help? Right. That don't even make sense, does it? If you're going down and you're truly sinking, you're going to scream as loud as you can. You know what? I saw, uh, I was down at the water earlier this week, and two guys were putting a boat in there. <laughs> And this old guy had a whistle around his neck. <laughs> and I got, I got to thinking about it. He's an older cat. And I was like, man, he's smart. Because most people who have boats have uh, one of the spray horns. That if you get just stranded or trapped or, or you, you face an impending danger, you take the, the spray and you blow it. And it's like a bullhorn. It makes a loud noise. And it, it's, it's a signal. This guy had that whistle <laughs> around his neck. It made me think about the Titanic. You know, when they, when they drowned and they had that whistle, trying to blow that whistle. But you know what? That man said, before I just sink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, I might go down, but you know what? I'm going out with that signal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're sinking and you're, and you're facing impending danger, then it stands to reason that you're going to call out for help. Yeah. And the thing about it is that God is in such close proximity that when you're sick, when Peter was sinking, he said, Lord, help me. And Jesus stretched out his hand. That's how close God is to you when you're drowning, when you're sinking. And you know what? It's embarrassing sometimes to ask for help on something that you struggle with over and over and over and over again. But I need to remind all of us that uh, no matter what your struggle is, God is not like people. People will say, oh, you back again? <laughs> oh, you still struggling with that? That's, that's how people will do you. People have a capacity. And, and sometimes their capacity is not big enough for what you're dealing with. And so they can only take you so far. God has an unending capacity for you. And not only does he have an unending capacity for you, but his love is so big for you that anytime you call on God with a sincere heart, he will always, and I repeat this, he'll always show up. God will never leave you to sink and drown. If you don't get God's help, it's because you wasn't really calling on him. Because God is faithful to show up. Now, you can say, I was praying, I was praying. No, you wasn't. You, you, I don't know what you was doing. I don't know what you was doing, but listen, God is right there. But were you hearing him? Because sometimes we pray, we doubt, we, we, we talk to God. God talks back. But we ain't listening. Mm -hmm. And so, it, it, it has to be a two-way street here. You're talking to God, he's going to talk back. But are you listening? And so just know that it's just a test. And I'm going to give you one more <clears throat> before we go. Learn patience and endurance. When life happens, learn patience and endurance. James chapter 1, verses 2 and 4 encourages believers to consider trials as an opportunity. It's an opportunity for growth 
and promotion. Let me just read it to you real quick. James chapter 1, verses 2 and 4. Here we go. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. He says, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces something. What does it produce? Endurance. And endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. And then it goes on to say in verse 5, But if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. So there it is. Once again, um, learn patience and learn endurance. And so my three points was pray no matter what. Secondly, know that whatever you're going through is just a test. Thirdly, we must learn patience and endurance. When a person who has endurance is pretty much saying, no matter what I have to go through, I'm not quitting. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight until I have nothing left to fight with. That's what endurance is. And as I close, I don't know anybody that I can think of that has the capacity and the endurance to deal with you and me like Jesus can. Because all of us have been a hot mess at times. Y'all won't say amen. amen. Oh yeah, we can, we can be a handful sometimes. God loves you so much to endure everything that we have put him through. But we don't have no patience for other people. Boy, we, we forget. God deals with me every single day. He has to deal with my mess. It's patient. And he has the endurance to do it. That same endurance we, we got to have when it comes to dealing with people we love. Who wants to be with somebody who won't fight for them? I don't want to always have to fight, but at the end of the day, you were fighting for him. Christ loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son. And even to this day, he's still fighting the enemy. Still a war against the enemy over you. That's how much he loves you. If God didn't love you, he'd just let you be. Whatever. Do whatever you want to do. But God loves you so much that he'll divinely intervene and deal with anybody concerning you. What, what, what do uh, people say? God don't play about me. God does not play about me. And guess what? God doesn't play about you. So I don't know what you're dealing with or what you're going through, but I need you to understand that when life happens, always pray. Know that whatever you're going through is just a test. It's just a season. And lastly, ask God to give you patience and endurance. Because guess what? Weeping may endure for a night, but we know that joy comes in the morning. Amen? Amen. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? First, I want to extend salvation. Um, there may be someone here who doesn't know Christ as personal Lord and Savior. We always want to give the opportunity for people to come to Christ. Uh, he, he's definitely coming back for his church. And if you don't know him, uh, today is the day of salvation. The Bible says that salvation is of the Lord. And whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So I don't know about you, but I ain't playing with my soul. I got to know that I know. Amen. And I've been knowing for a long time. So, amen. Praise God. Well, let us pray. Father, we come to you this morning and we thank you for your word. We know that sometimes life does happen. Uh, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we definitely know who holds tomorrow. Thank you for being such a faithful and awesome God. We magnify you. We esteem you. We lift you up today. Because you have been better to us than we truly deserve. And you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. 
thank you for allowing us to experience another day on top of the ground and not having the ground on top of us. Yes, sometimes we do have the weight of the world on our shoulders, but Lord, we need to shift that baggage off of our shoulders and give it to you. And I pray that you would help us to understand that you have not called us to shoulder everybody's situation, especially when we still have our own circumstances going on. Help us to become better versions of ourselves, better versions of you. Help us to imitate you. Help us to live, to glorify you. Forgive us of our sins because we've all sinned and we've come short of the glory of God. Your word says if we confess our sins that you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pray for Israel. We pray for the war. We pray, God, that you would bring, bring it to an end and that most, more than anything, that you would have your way. As the Bible says, we don't know how to pray. We don't know how to pray and ask for the things that we ought to ask for. But the Bible also says that the Spirit intercedes with words that we don't even understand. And so, God, we thank you once again for just allowing us to be in the land of the living. And we pray that you would bless us in every aspect of our lives. We have not because we ask not. And when we ask, we ask the miss. And so help us to believe those things that we're asking you for, God, so that we shall receive them. Bless every person in their circumstance. I pray that you pull them out. Uh, give us an exit door uh, for temptation. And uh, just help us, Lord, and we'll be careful to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, let us stand. As we prepare to leave, I pray that, um, that you all would, because somebody is going to be in need of this word this week. Somebody is going to cross your path, and I pray that you remind them that when life happens, the first thing they need to do is pray. The second thing they need to do is to know that it's just a test. And thirdly, pray that God give all of us endurance and patience, you know, because that's what's going to get us to where, we're, where we need to be. Amen. Okay, so uh, those of you who are going to give, uh, of course, we have different methods of giving. For those of you who are online, uh, we have Cash App. You can Cash App Inner Peace Church. You can text GIVE to 423-301-5545. And if Tab is watching, she's going to uh, place a link in the comments. You can click on the link and give that way. And, of course, you can give physically. Uh, so we're going to pray our way out of here, and we pray that you all have a blessed week. Amen? Amen. Amen. Lord, as we prepare to leave this place and never your presence, we pray that the grace of God and the sweet abiding communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each of us now, henceforth, and forevermore. And the church said, Amen. 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 God bless you all. Love you.